What dreams and fantasies have something in common? I believe that what they have in common is that some of what attracts us to them or that comes up in them may not be 100% within our control. So there's no need to have shame or fear, whether it's a sex dream or a fantasy or just something that you see that sparks an idea within you that doesn't have to be something to be feared, shamed, or used to hold us down or back from living our lives to our fullest expression. I'm Latia, and I love exploring sex and confidence and how do we live our best lives? What does it take to break free from mediocrity into being the rock star and the legend and superhero of our own lives? I love these things because the more we can own our true selves, our authentic expression, and just who we are, free from shame, guilt, holding back, limiting, filtering, whitewashing, whatever it is that we may use to keep ourselves small, the more we can be powerful, engaged, present, find those people that really light us up, and stop trying to be who we think we need to be to be accepted in any situation. So, fantasies and sex dreams. One of the most interesting things that I heard recently that turned me on was like so taboo on a core fundamental level that anytime I brought it up to a guy or a person or just in general, it's something that I've had to find ways of breaking in where it's like, don't be weirded out, but you probably will. I still kind of am myself, but this is something I'd like to explore. So it's not that I, I don't even, well, I guess it's for me, this topic is something that is deeply ingrained with my experience and something that I question within myself. Like there are a few levels to the fantasies and things that I would explore that it's like, oh, that's so weird. Oh my gosh, if someone finds out, they're gonna be like, you're crazy. You're such a pervert, what's wrong with you? And for some of it, it's just like, I know, I'm so weird. I don't know why I like this, but I do. And it's not that I wanna be weird intentionally, it's just that some of my interests have developed to a place where it's like, oh, that's something that sounds like it could be fun and something I've never tried. So I have had a lot of sexual encounters and experiences and within them, there tends to be, there, there are very few people that I've had a lot of encounters with. So it's like, I've had a, a, a wide variety of partners, so a large quantity. And within that, there's only so much variety within a relationship, we could call it. So with that, there's only so many people that I've gone to certain extremes or extents or like trying new things with. So when it comes to my sexual experiences, it's like, yes, I've met a lot of people, I've done a lot of things, I've had a wide variety, and sometimes there's a lacking in structure or cohesiveness within those relations if you're not intentional about it. So some things that I feel like I haven't explored much and wouldn't mind are along lines of like role play. I've never really had someone I could role play with and we do a scene and have fun and just play around with being in different power dynamics or different frames of mind or if we just have never met, whatever it is, haven't done it. And that's something that interests me. It also kind of freaks me out a little like, oh, could I actually do that? Like, would I be good at acting? I don't know. Um, I'd be great at it. I'm wonderful. I act all the time. So let's be real. It'd be delightful. And along that, what someone shared is they had this mention of, it It was like a story that they were telling and they just mentioned incest role play. And I was like, ooh, what? Like that sounds interesting and very intriguing. And it's like something that anytime I bring it up, it feels so difficult to bring up because it's like, how can you want to say, oh, wow, I'm just going to toss out this very taboo thing. Sounds like it could be fun to play with. Like, it's not necessary, not a hard limit. It's not like 
you know and like there are ways of doing it that feel like good and like comfortable for me and ways that I'm like oh that'd be weird like parent-child dynamic kind of weird I'm not sure I'm a fan at the same time someone was saying something the other day and I was like that that's kind of nice in the moment like in the moment where you're doing something and you're using that the term was daddy and I was like usually that's a no I have a dad I have a father he's never daddy my mom gets mommy sometimes if I really want to make her feel good um but like those kind of terms and endearment are like no but in the moment I was like huh I could I could open up to this so like that dynamic's kind of weird siblings questionable especially like step siblings easier than like real siblings or like cousins or like however you shape it like I'm willing to low-key explore with it not that I would actually do anything with my cousins or family because I'm like I'm an adult I can make conscious choices and I would never be like hey family member let's do it no that is definitely not what I would like I do have attractive family members like how these good genes don't just start from nothing my mom looks great my dad looks great my grandmas look great my grandpa that I met who was like blood related great I have very attractive family members they are wonderful human beings in the inside and out and we're related and I we I would never just toss that out there so it's one of those things where as a fantasy it just feels like crazy like oh my gosh I'm so weird I'm so strange why would I even want to play with that but it's like it's a fantasy it's just something that's fun and interesting and there need not be shame around it if we're gonna feel shame for something then it would be if you take advantage of a family member feel shame for that that was a bad choice like figure out what happened and heal from that and move on because at the end of the day no person is completely evil or completely good we are a mixture of the two and as long as we're acting out our fantasies responsibly what's the shame or harm in it because like besides that I've also I read a book when I was younger about these young girls who kind of like started playing with each other as they were growing up and like they would rub their crotches together and it felt nice or they would kiss each other and it was just something fun and natural that they did in the story of this book and for me growing up I was like wow that sounds like fun wouldn't it be so cool if I had a female friend that we were comfortable with each other and we could explore our sexuality together just practice kissing each other or touching each other or whatever and it not mean that we're lovers or going to be in a relationship but just that we're having fun and recently I've actually been able to experiment with that a little bit with some women and like just getting comfortable with like touching them or kissing them and like feeling like oh it's possible to like approach women and make and like just ask and then see what happens instead of feeling like like usually I feel like I'm an awkward teenage boy where it's just like oh women like you're so pretty and amazing and wonderful and I want to talk to you but I don't want you to think that I'm trying to date you but like at the same time everyone says I'm just super flirty so there's a lot of people who are like oh my gosh you're a lesbian right and it's like no I'm not I just can acknowledge a beautiful woman when I see one I'm not ashamed to be like oh you're gorgeous or I play with you like it's sex it's fun now I do believe that there's a difference between sex and commitment but that's like another thing I feel like we take sex so seriously sometimes where we get our value and identity caught up in it and sometimes it can just be fun and light and something where you explore your body and someone else's body and the dynamic when two people come together because at the end of the day like animals are doing it we're all like related to it we have a society that operates on sex and yet discourages us from exploring it or playing in it or having fun with it or doing anything that's just kind of not normal and I know that it's I guess it's like there's so much shame around it because whether you are comfortable with it or not like there is a taught and a learned shame around it because my mom never really shamed me around sex it was more like are you sure you want to do it with this person it was inquiry and allowing me the space to make the choices for myself while understanding the consequences of my actions and so for me I've gotten to get to a place where sex is fun I have sex because I like to I like to it's fun I'm exploring things discovering things and it's a space where it's 
it can be so powerful and magical to connect with another person. There's intimacy, there's vulnerability, exposing your body and, you know, bringing your whole self to the table. And there are very few places where we can really connect on such a deep level. And if we can't bring our weirdest, darkest fantasies to light, how are we really going to like connect and explore and see what's going on? Because there could be truth in the fantasy or it could just be something that sounded fun and it's not. But until we get a safe space to practice in, there's going to be things that hold us back or keep us down or make it weirder for us than it needs to be. So when it comes to fantasies, I feel like as long as you have the ability to control yourself, get consent, and know the difference between a fantasy and what's reality and make sure there's good communication around the sexual experience because you never know who might be willing to play with you in the way that you want to play you never know what you might discover because i know i shared with someone and he created a spin on what i was putting out there that i was like i never thought of that and i like where your head is at sir that is fun yes i appreciate you and so when we can express ourselves and be true to who we are and what we want, it creates an opportunity for other people to show up and share theirs. So if you are bold <laughs> and curious about things you can share, but I feel like the most important thing is to, it's okay to own that your fantasies are weird. It's okay if you daydream about things that don't make any sense. It's just a dream, it's just a thought and a fantasy. And I know I met someone when we were in college and neither one of us had, had vaginal sex. And she said that if you think it, then you're doing it. So if you think about having sex with a married man, you are committing adultery and sex simultaneously without doing anything. And for me, I'm like, that's silly because I think about murdering people or like slapping you for saying that silly thing and you're not hurt. And I feel okay. So as long as we're acting in ways that honor what we're about and we're not doing things. So I might imagine watching it, someone get punched in the face or every once in a while, I'll imagine hitting them. I have to be really upset because my hands are fragile. I don't want to hurt myself. So I imagine other people hitting them. So I imagine witnessing this person getting hit. It's convoluted, but it makes me feel better because I know I'm too delicate for that. And if you push me to the edge where I'm so upset, I just imagine myself punching you. I'm really mad and I don't punch you. It's just hmm, the thought of it is satisfying right now. And that doesn't mean that I'm gonna go out and start punching people. I have self-control, I'm an adult. I have been able to hold back on numerous occasions. And even when I do explode, it's after a lot of control and it's not in the way in which I probably wanted to. So as long as we're able to own what we're willing to do, not willing to do, set boundaries on our other people's boundaries, because just, just because you have a fantasy doesn't mean that anyone is required to play with you or act on it with you. It is yours and yours alone and you are responsible for it. And so as long as we can own, I know what I want, you know what you want, and we're willing to collaborate, sex can be so much fun and such a great place to discover ourselves, what we want, and what's possible in life.